Greetings, traveler. You're just in time for tonight's entertainment. Have you ever heard the tale of the warrior who fought using only a shield? I thought not. It's not a story the Fighters Guild would tell you. Hear then the account in full, that you too may know how to block Skyrim. Think you can go blade to blade with me? You'd be dead in six seconds. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to beat Skyrim, only using shields and the block skill. So first off, pick whatever race you want. I chose a high elf because they can run the fastest because they're the tallest of all the races, but it doesn't really matter what you pick, so just go with anything. Now as usual, the first thing you're going to want to do is get out of Helgen. However, since you don't have a shield at this point in the game, you shouldn't be fighting anyone because anything besides using a shield is off limits. Anything that levels a skill other than the block skill is also off limits. So if you come down here, just run past these people who are fighting, and you'll find your first shield. It's just an iron shield, but it's better than nothing. However, the first challenge with only using a shield will become clear pretty soon. You only have 100 stamina, and you can only bash your opponents like three times before you run out. And it does terrible damage as well. So just bash anybody who gets in your way and run past them. After you're free from the cave, make your way down to the Guardian Stones and choose the Warrior Stone, and it'll boost the speed at which you level up block. Now, as I said earlier, you're going to be pretty bad in combat because of your limited stamina and pitiful damage, but fortunately, for the time being, you have Hadvar with you, so just uh, let him take care of anything that gets in your way. Now, when you get to Riverwood, you're going to meet these two guys, Sven and Feindal. They have a bit of a rivalry going on, and you need to choose a side. So you're going to pick the obvious choice and go with Feindal, since, um, you know, elves need to help other elves out. Now, you're going to have to deliver a forged letter to Feindal's future girlfriend, but, you know, it's for a good cause. You're helping out a brother elf, and besides that, you're going to be better at blocking by the time this is done. So after you help him out, he'll be willing to follow you around, which is really important because you really suck at putting out any kind of attack damage at this point, and you need a bodyguard. Before you leave, make sure you talk to somebody who will send you to Whiterun to ask the Jarl for help, because if you don't do this, then you'll have to pass a speech check with the guard, and that will level up your speech. And that's just not acceptable for this run. Now when you get near Whiterun, you'll find these farms here. So just loot all of the cabbage and the potatoes, the leeks, and the tomatoes. You might not be a Nord, but you're still a Viking. Now tomatoes can be kind of hard to find in Skyrim since they don't grow them on farms apparently, so I'm going to show you exactly where you can find a few. Your first option is to head over to the Whiterun Gate from the inside, hop up on this barrel, and then hop over to the wall. You're a tall guy, but if you wiggle around enough, you'll be able to squeeze out and escape the city. Follow along the wall until you find a gap, and then head in. Now tunnel your way below the surface like a mole looking for a grub, until you find the prized tomatoes, which you can find here in this chest. Now if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can just head up to the Jarl's palace and steal his tomatoes. Make sure you're hidden while doing it. Now make as much vegetable soup as you have ingredients for. Now head back over to the Whiterun Gate and take all the soup you made and drop it on the ground. Make sure you drop them individually and not all in one pile. Get Feindal's attention and tell him to pick up all the soup you just dropped. Make sure he gets every last one. Now head through the gate to the outside and fast travel back into Whiterun. As you can see, the soup you dropped will still be on the ground, and what's more, all of the soup that Feindal picked up will still be in his pockets. Repeat the process until you have, you know, a reasonable amount of soup. Now the reason you've made vegetable soup is because when you drink it, for 10 real-time minutes, you will be able to bash infinitely, because it keeps restoring stamina every second. 
However, your damage still sucks because you have a really low grade shield. So head over to the Cartman and hitch a ride to Winterhold, because there's a cave up north of Winterhold that you'll want to be going to called Septimus Cygnus' Outpost. Head over to it, you'll find this cave, and you'll find an old man inside. He wants you to use a cube to get ancient knowledge from an Elder Scroll and some other stuff for him. It doesn't really matter, just do whatever he says. And head down into the underground cavern he sends you to. You can use gravity to defeat your opponents, or just bash them in the face and run past them. The dwarven robots and the pale skulkers don't really like each other, so just let them hash it out. Be careful not to get caught in the crossfire. And eventually you'll find these two people who are getting ready to fight each other. So just let them take care of each other, or let the skulkers do it, it doesn't matter. And go over to the woman in the armor. And on her body you'll find a special shield, the Targe of the Blooded. This spiky shield will bleed out your opponents when you bash them with it. And the faster you bash, the more they will bleed. Next, you're going to want to get yourself the heck out of there before the pale skulkers turn you into an icicle shish kebab and have you for Tuesday dinner. As you can see, the Targe of the Blooded can bleed anything, including robots. I don't know how that works exactly. I guess they're bleeding oil or something. Anyways, grab the scroll if you want to. You'll need it if you want to finish the main quest. And head on out of there. Now you've got your spiky shield. However, this is not enough. And you're going to want to seek out a secret power. And this secret power is as powerful as it is secret. So head on back to Whiterun, and you'll find this upside-down boat with shields on it. Join up with the companions. Do whatever they want you to do. Vilkas doesn't think you're worth anything in a fight, so prove him wrong and drive a few spikes into his face. He'll understand his mistake pretty quickly. And then Vilkas wants you to bring his sword to Yorlin the blacksmith, and then the blacksmith wants you to bring the shield to Ayla, then Ayla wants you to talk to Farkas, and Farkas will send you to go beat somebody up. This woman thinks she can take you in a fist fight, but what she doesn't realize is you're not using your fists. So just bash her face in with a spiky shield and take her money. Now that the companions have seen that, you know, you actually know what you're doing to some degree with a the shield, they're going to give you a real assignment. Now remember, this is a block-only run, so don't pick any locks and don't pick up any skill books. Now kick the snot out of the Draugr. They're a bunch of anorexic zombies anyway, so they shouldn't put up much of a fight. Now as you're doing all this blocking and bashing, you're going to be leveling up. For this run, you're going to want to ignore Stamina and Magicka and only level up health, and you'll see why in a bit. And take whatever block perks are available to you. Now you're going to run into a group of werewolf hunters called the Silver Hand. Just kick the snot out of them. These guys like to carry a lot of gold, so make sure you loot it from them, as you're going to need it for later. Now when your block skill gets high enough, you'll be able to take the perk called Power Bash. This perk will allow you to do a more powerful bash, which will do more damage and it'll stagger your enemies more. It does consume more stamina than a regular bash, but that's not an issue since you have vegetable soup. After the mission with Farkas, the companions will send you up to Yorland Greymane to get a weapon. Now he claims he can make any kind of weapon that you'd find in Skyrim. However, he doesn't seem to consider shields to be weapons. So just have him make you a dagger. You're not going to use it in combat, but it is useful for cutting through spider webs. Get another mission from Skewer. Skewer will send you to go track down an escaped convict. So just track him down and beat his face in. Now the companions will offer you the secret power that you have been seeking. So follow them into the Underforge, drink the blood from the bowl, and you shall be transformed into a beast. Continue fighting the Silver Hand and gaining gold from them. Now when you have a perk point available for it, you're going to want to take the perk called Quick Reflexes. And what this is going to do is make time slow down whenever your enemies power attack and you're blocking. This is going to give you extra opportunities for beating face, or just getting out of the way when somebody comes at you with a giant sledgehammer. Now that you've contracted lycanthropy, it's time to put it to good use. Head over to this place called Mara's Eye Pond. Beat the crap out of the crabs, and head on down inside. You'll find a couple of vampires down there, so just give them the old one-two smack to the face, and they will go down. Your faithful spiky shield will drain their blood faster than they can drain yours. Head over to this cage here, and you'll find a dead body inside. And on this body, you'll find an amulet of Stendar. 
Now head over to Windhelm and hire a boat to take you to Solstheim. Once you're in Solstheim, head over to this place on the map, and you'll find a shrine of Kinnereth. And more importantly, you're going to find an amulet of Kinnereth. So take your amulet and head on back to Skyrim. If Feindal is not with you at this point, then head back over to Riverwood and recruit him again. Take the amulet of Stendar and the amulet of Kinnereth and duplicate them the same way you duplicated the soup. You're only going to need about six amulets of Stendar, because more than that is not really going to help you block any better, but you are going to want a very high number of amulets of Kinnereth. And take Feindal outside the city so that you can transform without anybody getting mad at you. If you talk to him and transform at the exact same time, then you'll still be in dialogue with him when you turn into a werewolf. After your transformation is finished, tell him you want to trade some things with him, and give him all of the amulets you have. So the amulets of Kinnereth, the amulets of Stendar, and any other amulets you picked up along the way, make sure you give it all to him. Now go into his inventory and look at the amulets he gave him, and equip them to yourself from his inventory. You'll need to equip them one at a time to make sure that they all get equipped. Now this might take a pretty long time, depending on how many amulets you have, but have patience because it is going to pay off. Wait until your time as a werewolf is over, and you'll transform back into your beautiful elf self. And as you can see, all of your amulets are going to be equipped simultaneously. The amulets of Kinnereth will boost your stamina to ridiculous levels. You'll be able to sprint like a marathon runner, and now you won't even need vegetable soup in combat most of the time. So just keep doing whatever the companions tell you to do. Keep beating faces and taking names. Pretty much nothing will be able to stand up to you as long as you take them in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But eventually, the Silver Hand will strike back and take out the companion leader. So just, you know, give him a good old Viking burial. And by that, of course, I mean throw him into the fire pit. But now it's time to take down the Silver Hand once and for all. Vilkas will be going with you. He's a pro gamer, so he's going to try to steal all the kills. Which is fine, you know, you don't have anything to prove. You already kicked his butt once, and he's still coping with it. But anyways, in the last room of the Silver Hand's hideout, you'll find a skill book. Make sure you don't read it, but note the location because you'll be coming back for it later. Now go back to Yorland and give him the fragments of an axe. He'll rebuild the axe, and then head on down into the Underforge to talk to the other companions. Yorland will emerge from the shadows, wielding an axe, like he's about to do a sneak attack on you. But don't worry, he's just giving you the axe because it turns out to be the key to open the tomb of some old Viking dude or whatever. So go with the companions to the Viking tomb and use the axe to get inside. While there, you'll be attacked by a bunch of Viking ghosts, so just beat the heck out of them. Use the dagger you got to cut through the cobwebs, because that can be hard to do with the shield. And then the ghost of the companion leader will show up, and a ghost wolf will come out of him. Just give it a good slap or two, and it'll settle down. And you're now the new leader of the companions. That's pretty neat, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the shield of Ysgrimor. It has a higher armor rating than the Targe of the Blooded, and it does more damage when using power bashes. In addition to that, it gives you magic resistance and boosted health. Now that you're the leader of the Companions, you can ask Nyada Stonearm to follow you. You can also get her to train your block skill up to 75. Limited gold won't be an issue here, because every time you train with her, you can then go into her inventory and take back the gold you gave her. You're basically forcing your employee to give you free labor. But, you know, you can't let principles get in the way of progress and progression in the block skill is more important than anything else. So now that you've got 75 in block, you can take some pretty useful perks, like Disarming Bash and Block Runner. Block Runner is going to allow you to move around quickly while having your shield up, which is going to help you close the distance on mages and archers while taking minimal damage. And Disarming Bash is going to let you knock the weapons out of your enemy's hands mid-swing. At this point, you've become something of an unstoppable juggernaut, However, your abilities as a shield warrior are not yet complete, because you do not yet have the best shield. So head over to the Shrine of Periite, and you'll find a kitty cat named Kesh the Clean. He's going to want you to gather some ingredients so that he can make a special incense. Flawless rubies are pretty rare, but fortunately, I know a location. So head over here on the river, you'll find a boat with some jewels in it, including a flawless ruby, so pick that up. You can find silver all over Skyrim, 
Here's a location for convenience. So mine up the silver ore you find outside the hideout, and then smelt it into an ingot. If you didn't pick up any vampire dust while you were at Mara's Eye Pond, you can find some over here in Hamar's Shame. So just drive their faces into the dirt with your magic resistant shield and take their dust. And Deathbell flowers can easily be found in and around Morthal. So take the ingredients you found back to Kesh, and he will brew up some green goo. Take a good long whiff of the goo, and you will hear a voice speaking to you. Do whatever the voice tells you to. Go kill a bunch of people hanging out in a dwarven ruin. Now they're going to try to spew noxious green goo all over you, but never fear, the human stomach can only contain so much liquid, so there's only going to be so much they can spit at you. Now the final mage in this place is pretty tough. He's got some of that secret magic like the ability to tank your frame rate, but you know, just keep beating his face till he can't take it anymore. Business as usual, easy peasy. Head on back to the talking goo, and it will give you a special shield. And this shield is called Spellbreaker. Not only does it have the highest armor rating of any shield in the game, and therefore does the most damage, but it generates a magical ward when you're blocking with it. The great thing is that even when your ward gets broken by a powerful spell, you still won't take any damage, and your ward will be back up in no time to protect you. And it'll even protect you against things like poison. And now it's time for the final stages of leveling your block skill. So head over to this town called Carthwaston. This guy here will be having some trouble with some mercenaries. Kick the snot out of the mercenaries, and the people of the town will be grateful to you. And so this orc here will tell you that you're welcome at any of the orc strongholds. So head over to the stronghold called Mor Kazgur. The chief here will be able to train your block skill up to 90, so just dump the remainder of your gold on him and get your block skill as high as you can. Next you should head back over to Soul's Time and go into Raven Rock Mine. You'll find this old guy here who needs some help, so offer him a helping hand. He's going to send you down into the mine to find out what happened to the place, so just head down and bash anything that gets in your way. Now the enemies down here are going to be pretty tough, so you should probably just run past them, unless you have a death wish. Spellbreaker is going to help you get past these murderous soul gems, solve some puzzles, run past some traps, beat the heck out of the dragon priest, and eventually you'll find this book here. Read the book, and it will transport you to the Daedric Realm of Apocrypha. There's going to be some pretty nasty types in here, some lurkers, so just kick the snot out of the lurkers. And at the end of this book world, you're going to find another book, and it's going to offer you some different perks. What you should choose here is Scholar's Insight, because this makes it so that when you read a skill book, you get two skill points instead of one. And now that you have this ability, it's time to hunt down the skill books that are going to raise your block skill. The first one you'll be able to find at Trader's Post. As expected, there are some traders inside, so just uh, give them the old one, two. And you'll find your first book here on this bookshelf. The next location is Redwater Den. You'll find the skill book right here on this table. The people here will let you take it with or without a library card, so just go ahead and take it. The next location is in the Hall of the Dead in Whiterun. Go down into the catacombs and you'll find this book here on the table. Next you should head over to Driftshade Refuge. You might recognize this as the place you wiped out the silver hand with Vilkus. You're going to find a skill book here on the table. Don't take it, it levels up the wrong skill. But go over to this smaller table and take this book instead. Finally, you should go and find Captain Aldous in Solitude. He's going to have a special mission for you to obtain the final skill book, and you can find this skill book in Windhelm. So head over to the Palace of the Kings, and make your way over to Ulfric's bedroom. This place is a natural stone labyrinth. I don't know how anybody finds their way around in here, but don't worry, I've laid out the exact path you need to follow. Here it is on his dresser, so just go ahead and steal it from him. Make sure you deliver the book to Captain Aldous, because he's a cool guy, and he's got a cool beard. And now it's time to train the last few levels of block. So head over to Dragon's Bridge and talk to this woman named Olda. Apparently her husband has a drinking problem, and so she's going to send you to go find his secret stash of alcohol. So just recover the hidden booze and head back to Dragon's Bridge. At this time you might get attacked by hired thugs, so just mash their steel armor in on them like mashing tinfoil into a mashed potato. It turns out that they were sent to kill you by Sifnar Iron Kettle. If you don't know who that is, that's Ulfric's cook, and apparently he's mad that you stole the book. Now instead of taking the alcohol to Olda, give it to her husband Horgir instead, 
and in gratitude for giving him the booze, he'll give you a bit of block training. Next, you'll want to head over to Kynesgrove and talk to Rogi Knotbeard. Now, one of his ancestors lost a shield in a cave, so Rogi is going to send you to go and find it. So just beat the face of whatever gets in your way, even if it's giant arachnids. Arachnids are squishier than some enemies you faced, and so you shouldn't have any problem dealing with them. Find the shield, bring it back to Rogi, and he'll give you further block training. Now, if you aren't at 100 block yet, you can train the last few levels of block by getting enemies to beat on your shield. Strong enemies will level your block faster, but they'll also do a lot more damage to you, so make sure you bring some health potions if this is the way you want to go about it. When you've finally gotten to 100 block, go ahead and take the final perk. Shield Charge. This perk will allow you to sprint while raising your shield, and anything that you run into is gonna get sent flying. Enemies will no longer be a threat to you at this point. Gravity is gonna be your best friend. Even Skyrim's fiercest predators won't stand a chance against you, and the laws of physics themselves will be shattered before you. Since you're done leveling at this point, you can go ahead and pick a new standing stone. It doesn't matter which one. And continue the main quest line. Eventually, you'll get to speak to this dragon here, and he's going to offer you special training. Tell him you want to train with Foos, and he'll give you a new special power called Force Without Effort. What this does is it makes it so that you get staggered 25% less, and you can stagger your enemies 25% more. This means that your regular bashes will now do the same amount of staggered as your power bashes did. Your enemies will now stagger helplessly before you, and none will be able to stand up to you. Lastly, you're going to want to find the chef that sent assassins after you, beat his face, eat him, and become the true master chef of Skyrim.